My door lock actuators are acting up and apparently this is a common problem. There is a common solution that has already been done on my car and apparently it hasn't fixed it or it did fix it for a little while and now it's gotten worse. So I'm gonna show you how, I'm gonna, first I'm gonna talk about that common problem and how you can solve it. I'll show you what codes I have and then I will talk about how I diagnosed the actual problem on this car. All right guys, in a nutshell, the problem is when I lock the car, it unlocks. That's essentially the problem. Now, let me show you what codes I have. All right, and these are the codes in question that I have right here. A6D5 and A6D4, central locking, relay locking, and unlocking. So if you have those codes, and if you have them and you're watching this video because you have them, very likely the symptom that you have on your car is that the locks will not work at all. They, were, they will either stay open or they'll stay closed and they won't lock or unlock with the key fob. But again, that's not what's happening for me. When I lock my door, it automatically unlocks. Not the rest of them. The rest of them, I believe, work. Actually, that one seems is not working at all right now. That's a, that's a new symptom, actually. Those were working before. <laughs> but this is the one that kind of primarily ha has been having the problem. It'll lock and then unlock. So that's kind of interesting that those are not working now. But anyway, now if your doors are not working, the common fix for this, this is actually a, a BMW special bulletin. Cars were coming in with this problem and the fix is to replace a 15 amp fuse, fuse number 57 with a 20 amp fuse. It's literally what the factory says to do. But what I noticed when I took a look here, this is my, uh, my legend here. And when I was looking at this, you see how number 56 and 57 are highlighted in blue? Well, so those fuses are actually right in the bottom of the box. They're right here. But if we zoom in, 56 and 57 are already replaced with 20 amp fuses. 56 is on the left and 57 is on the right, the two yellow fuses that we're looking at right here. So. I already have this, you know, this, this problem has already occurred in the past for my vehicle and somebody replaced these fuses and it has, I guess it solved the problem until now. Now I've got this new symptom of the lock locking or, and locking and then immediately unlocking. So I was in here the other day, I was testing uh, the locks. I was locking them and unlocking them, trying to just play around. And then all of a sudden, boom, they stopped working altogether. I got that same symptom that everybody you know, usually gets. And I took a look at the fuse and my 20 amp fuse, my 20 amp fuse was popped. So I replaced it, but it still didn't uh, solve the problem. I still have the same symptom of locking and unlocking. It did make the door locks work again, but they were, uh, you know, the, this one just keeps locking and unlocking. So to understand why that 20 amp fuse popped, you have to understand what's causing this problem in the first place. The door lock actuators, that fuse number 57 powers the door lock actuators. And what's happening is those door lock actuators are going bad and they're starting to draw more current than they are supposed to when they're operating. And so sometimes one of the, the voltage on one of them is spiking, it's drawing more current and it's popping the fuse. BMW's fix for this, it's not really a fix. What, what essentially that was was you know, these door lock actuators, it turned out to, they started to go faulty. They started to have these faults where they would randomly draw a little more current and they would pop that 15 amp fuse that they thought would be good enough. So rather than do a, a recall on it and replace all those door lock actuators, they were just telling the techs to just replace that fuse and send the customer on their way. And then I guess if the problem returned for that customer, then you can just replace those door lock actuators. It's just kind of a little band aid that BMW wanted to do whatever. So you might think at this point, we just need to replace the driver's door lock actuator because that's the one that keeps locking and unlocking, right? So obviously that one has the problem. You might be uh, okay with making that guess, but um, usually, but in this particular case, I actually have two problems. And the way I was able to figure that out is I measured the current that each door lock actuator is drawing when it's under test. And I found multiple problems. Let me show you how I measured that current. I used a picoscope. 
This is a digital oscilloscope. It hooks into the computer. This is specifically a 2204A. This is one of the cheaper ones, like their sort of entry level model, but it's actually good enough to do what we want to do. I also used a, um, a current probe. This is a low amperage current probe from Antec. It's a CC65, so 65 um, amp, amp, amp clamp. So I used this whole setup with this laptop in order to do this. Now I got the idea to do this from a, a fellow YouTuber. His channel is called Mechanic Mindset. And I'm gonna leave some links in the description to some of his videos on this whole setup because it's really cool. He goes in depth. And if you're kind of interested in this stuff, go check out those videos. And you know, this is actually really, really affordable. I forget how much this was. I bought it years ago. It, it, definitely under a hundred dollars. And this was, I think this whole setup with all these, I got these, um, these, uh, digital test leads and everything. I think it was like 200 bucks, something like that, maybe a little bit more, but very, very affordable around the $200 range. I'm pretty sure. So check it out if you're interested, but, uh, let me hook this all up and I'll show you how I measured the current. So I had to take the door card off in order to measure the current at these wires right here. That's actually real easy to do. You know, the, the trim, the trim right here, it, you know, just pops off of here. And then you've just got some T20 bolts, one, two, and three. Real easy to come off. So this is the door lock actuator right here. The wire is going through to it. They're actually taped together with some cloth tape. So I took that off and um, I looked at a wiring diagram to figure out which, which uh, wire it actually was, but you don't really have to do that. You can just kind of measure each one, one by one, while you're locking, unlocking the door until you finally see a signal. Incidentally, it's this wire right here, the solid white wire. It's gonna be solid white on all the doors. So all you do, you get your amp clamp. We're gonna set it to one millivolts per every 10 milliamps. Now what that means is, um, I, I like to think of it the other way around. If you are measuring one amp, then this thing is going to output 0.1 volts. And that's what you're gonna see on the screen. So in order to get the software to automatically change that to amps for us, we're gonna, we're gonna set it up to, to do that for us. But if you don't have software that does that, just know that when you're measuring one amp, it's putting out 0.1 volts. And on this scale, if you're measuring one amp, it's putting out 0.001 volts. So that's how that works. So we're gonna take this clamp and we're gonna put it around just this white wire like that. So that it's just kind of like that. Now, it, it might be the wrong way around, but it, it really doesn't matter. You're still gonna see the same, um, same thing on the screen. Okay, so um, we're gonna set this thing up in order to record. Um, first of all, this is PicoScope automotive software. I'm able to use that with this um, non-automotive PicoScope through a trick that uh, the mechanic mindset guy figured out. So again, I will link to uh, his videos for how to do that because I forget at this point. I'm gonna set this to 500 milliseconds per division. And then I'm actually gonna set up the probe so that, see right now it's a, a times one probe. And what I was telling you was, you know, uh, in the mode that we're in, every amp is gonna show up as 0.1 volts. Well, if you wanna do the math and convert that to, um, to a whole number or to amps, basically the times 10 will do that. You're gonna see it read in volts, but it really means amps. But they have another probe to find, which is this one, 60 amp current clamp in 20 amp mode. That is the mode that we're in. That's basically the clamp that we have. We have a 65 amp one, but it works the same. So now when it does that math, it's actually gonna show up in amps on this scale. You know, you'll see that the trace that it's reading right now, it's coming in way under zero volts. That's because we need to zero it out. And you do that by pushing the button on the thing, which is that button right there, that button. So that zeroes it out. So let me point you to the screen while I'm doing that. You see, there's this big thing when I do it and I push it a couple times and now it's reading zero. Actually, I wanna set up a trigger here, trigger auto and the trigger is right here and I want to set it Ooh, this scale is too small set the scale to five amps or so and we're gonna trigger right at about two amps okay so now I'm gonna lock and unlock the door see okay we are upside down with the current club I'm gonna just go switch it 
Okay, so all I did was switch it so that it's, uh, you know, I, I flipped it around. So now when I lock and unlock the door, there you go. Okay, I'm gonna do it again. I'm gonna do it a couple of times. Okay, now we're going to stop this. Cool, and let's go back and look at one of these. Ah, where's the thingy? I'm gonna zoom in on one of these. Okay, so what we have right here is we're reading zero amps and we trigger a lock. So this is the actual lock and this is the locking current. Let me measure this for you with a little, little thing here. So that at peak is measuring 3.1 amps. I don't know if you can see that, 3.1 amps, okay? And look what happens it, it locks and then the current drops, but it does not drop to zero volts or uh, zero amps. It actually stays steady. Let me, let me do another measurement on that. It stays steady at about 1.2 amps and then an unlock is triggered and then it goes back to zero. So that right there is the reason that it keeps locking and then unlocking because after it locks, it's drawing amps still. It's still drawing current, and I guess the computer can read that, and it's unlocking it in order to fix it. So definitely, this door lock actuator is bad, but um, it's actually not drawing an abnormally high current, and the way I know that, I'm gonna show you. All right, so this is the BMW technical information system, and um, this is the page on you know, uh, how, what, you, what you do to, to measure the current, and this is actually telling you that the power must not exceed 3.3 amps. A current spike above 3.3 amps on starting the central locking drive is permitted and is the normal operating condition. So you can have a, a, a small spike, but not a huge spike. So the, they're actually telling you that the uh, tolerance for the time right here is, it tells you it's activated for 500 milliseconds and a plus or minus 50 milliseconds is permitted, and that's the normal condition. So that's probably what's triggering that unlock. It's seeing that the current is still high for, for too long. It's, the current is still there for more than 500 milliseconds plus 50, and that's when it's, you know, it's realizing something's wrong, so it triggers an unlock. That's probably what the computer's thinking. But here's what a normal waveform would look like. And you can see that this looks similar to the waveform we've been seeing. You see this spike up, a drop down, and then a spike up, this little little extra spike here, and then it kind of draws the three, about 3.3 amps, and then it goes back to zero. So why don't we go back to our current draw so you can see what's happening. You can see that there's that spike, it drops down, it goes up, there's that little spike up here, drops down and then here's the steady 3.3 or what should be 3.3. In this case, it's not quite 3.3, but it then it drops down and it stays at 1.2 for too long. And that's when it's triggering that unlock, right? So uh, it looks sort of normal except for, you know, that extra power that it's drawing, but it does not look like what they say a bad door lock looks like which is that you see this, you know, you see the same pattern, but then it's drawing way more than 3.3 amps. They don't say what it's drawing in this particular drawing, but you can see that it's, you know, the red line is the 3.3, so it's probably drawing, you know, five amps in this particular case. They say that's what a bad one looks like. Well, that's not what this door lock looks like, this driver's door door lock looks like. So my remaining question was, how, why did the fuse blow? Because if this is drawing like at most 3.1 and you've got four door locks drawing about 3.1, that's about 12 amps. That's certainly not 20 amps. So something else was wrong, okay? <laughs> so what I did was I measured the current on the other side. And I'm not going to do that again because I actually have it saved. So here we go. Passenger's door lock. All right, so this is the passenger door lock, and now you can see that we have this big spike right here. And that's actually at 6.2 amps. <laughs> so that is what's popping the fuse, definitely. You can see that 
the normal current there. This one is actually drawing 2.7, which is below the 3.3 that it's supposed to draw. So still there's something wrong with this. There's definitely something wrong with this passenger door lock actuator as well. So in this case, I had two problems on this car. Um, replacing the passenger door lock would fix the, the problem I'm seeing here where it locks and unlocks, but this, I mean, fixing the driver's door lock would, would fix that problem, but the passenger door lock actuator is still bad as well, and it needs to be replaced as well. So I actually have two problems on this car. I could have gone ahead and replaced the driver's door lock actuator and solved that problem, but that fuse was a ticking time bomb because of the bad passenger side door lock actuator. It could have popped at any moment and that would leave me unable to lock or unlock my doors. It's actually kind of scary if you can't unlock your doors because there's no way to get out of the car except crawling out through the window. So that's never good. Anyway, I've got the parts on order. I'm waiting for them to arrive when they arrive. I'll show you how to change it over and uh, we'll finish up this video. Let me know if you thought the diagnosis part with the Pico scope was interesting. I certainly thought it was. I, I really don't get the opportunity to use that ever. I'm definitely glad I have it because it allows me to definitively determine that a component is bad. A lot of the times you're just guessing without the proper tools to measure it. Um, if you're interested in more of that, I will do, I'll try to do more of it. Um, I'm not a professional though, and I don't, I don't have a ton of experience with it. I don't get to see all these problems coming into my shop day after day. So I get all this experience. I just don't get that, but I'll try to do my best to cover it. If you're interested, let me know. So I just finished actually changing over the door lock and I think it might make this whole video run a little bit too long. So what I'm going to do is release this video first and then I'll release the repair video next week. So if you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up, subscribe if you want to see more. I'm the fifties kid. Thanks a lot for watching.